Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are building two sealed ecosystems. We're using one quart jars and materials collected from my very own backyard. That means that we're using uh, locally sourced sand, stone, and other elements in these projects. Now here's a sneak peek at what they look like when they were completed. This is one week after setup. It's a little bright, but that gives you a good idea of what we're about to build today. I'm gonna show you how to uh, make a tank like this and how to set it up for long-term success. So, first of all, we're going to need some soil. We need substrate. I'm not using any compost or any uh, organic material like that, so we're going to use some sand that I collected from my backyard and some pebbles that I happened to find about three feet underground. Yeah, I had to dig pretty deep, but these are pretty cool, and uh, they should work well here. We'll have a nice contrast between the uh, beige color of our sand and the red color of our stone. Now this is basically simulated river silt or sediment. It is sand that I have uh, rinsed and washed thoroughly. And this sand is collected from my own backyard. We use it in tons of projects and it does very well. If you need an alternative, you could use any aquarium safe sand. Uh, there are even some options available at uh, garden supply stores, uh, Home Depot, Walmart, that kind of stuff. I've even used pool filter sand in the past, but I prefer this natural sand. And we're going to add a little water to help it flatten out. We're not using any soil in this project, so we don't have to be too careful when we flood the aquarium. Uh, if you're building a Wallstad style ecosphere, then you will have to uh, be very careful when you add your water. For plants, we are using Slender Spike Rush. This stuff does really well in jar aquariums. And after a while, we might even see it purling, uh, where it produces uh, tons of little bubbles of oxygen. Uh, that might take a while, a month or two after setup. We'll hope for the best, though. Uh, this is a one-quart mason jar, and it does have a logo on it. So we're going to turn it to the back, and we're going to plant the uh, Spike Rush back along that side of the tank. I always keep the rear of the aquarium uh, facing the light source, which in my case is a uh, natural light source, just a window. But uh, this allows the plants and algae to grow on that side while still allowing you to see into the front for easy viewing. The spike rush will plant really nicely into this soil, into the sand, excuse me. And uh, yeah, it's going to look pretty nice. We're going to toss in some of our stone here, and we're going to keep that on the back side of the aquarium as well. We're not doing any fancy aquascaping here. Uh, honestly, a jar this small, you can't get too much uh, <laughs> uh, too creative with it as far as aquascaping goes. But I am applying my stones, and I'm going to move most of them towards the rear of the jar. Uh, this will help to keep the plants in place until they are rooted and settled. It'll also look pretty nice. It looks a little bit like lava rock, but I assure you, these are local Georgia stones here. I just happen to find them underground. For the uh, live water samples in these projects, I am using some uh, material taken from my pitch black aquarium. I've never shown it on the channel. It is a dark five gallon tank meant to raise bladder snails, uh, but it also contains quite a few tubaflex and other creatures as well. And duckweed. Surprisingly, we can grow duckweed in the dark. I didn't know this. And uh, yeah, it's kind of surprising. It's doing really well, though. So this dark aquarium is full of tubaflex, um, ostracods, copepods, and other animals. I included both uh, of these jars uh, with the same water samples, the same plants, and roughly the same amounts. Now we're adding some dayflower here. This is good stuff. And I'm plucking the lower leaves and inserting them into the jar. By removing the lower leaves of the stem, this will encourage the plant to root more quickly. When we revisit the tank towards the end of the video, a week after setup, you'll see uh, roots already forming and the dayflower starting to grow. We're following the same idea here. I'm planting the dayflower towards the rear of the aquarium, and uh, that way it won't block our uh, viewing area in the front. Now, this dayflower, it may or may not succeed in the long term in this project, uh, but that's fine. If the dayflower does eventually fail after a few months and it starts to wilt and to fall away, our small creatures, our snails, our crustaceans, our invertebrates, they will consume this dayflower. 
And uh, so it'll act kind of like a long-term, slow-release food source for the pets inside the jars. On the other hand, if the day flower does succeed and it lives, you know, permanently in this jar, uh, it will occasionally lose a leaf, and that will act as a food source for the pets as well. So my goal here is to establish a short-term food source in the form of those wilted leaves, and that will allow the algae to grow a bit on these jars, or in these jars, and eventually algae will be the main food source for the creatures in these projects. We also have duckweed. The duckweed will uh, occasionally, uh, you know, will lose a piece of duckweed. It will wilt, and uh, that will become food as well. So in episode one, I happened to uh, label the side of the jar with a big old piece of duct tape, and it looked really bad. So here in episode two, I am labeling the lids, uh, which is a big improvement. Originally, I only meant to make one <laughs> sealed jar ecosystem for this episode, that one right there. But uh, unfortunately, I lost most of the build footage, so I decided to build it again. So essentially, we have two identical ecospheres here, and uh, they were set up in very much the same way, with the same uh, water samples, the same plants, the same stone, everything. The jar on the right did get a, a bit more uh, stone than the other jar, but that's fine. And uh, just going to take a quick look at some of our pets inside. We have quite a healthy colony of tubaflex worms that got carried into this project. And uh, they came from the dark aquarium. And that's fine. Um, when you're building an ecosphere, you want hitchhikers. You want to incorporate hitchhikers into your ecosystem. That's the main source of fun with these projects for me. Seeing how we can build a proper, long-term, sealed ecosystem with all of these little creatures inside. You may be asking yourselves, uh, how do these little creatures survive? Don't they need air? Don't they need oxygen? And that's true. But uh, these tanks, these ecospheres, these biospheres, they function uh, by way of the plants filtering the atmosphere and filtering the water within the sealed ecosystem. And these plants can filter it enough for these small creatures to survive. Bladder snails are a little larger and I'm a little, bit, a little bit worried about having them in this project, but I think that they'll do fine overall. Uh, we might end up with a few babies eventually, and the babies might not get very big to start with. They might even stay small forever, and that seems to be an adaptation based around the amount of food or the amount of free oxygen. We'll have to wait and see, but we've seen that in other sealed biosphere projects in the past. I call it dwarfing. It's not meant to be, uh, you know, politically incorrect. It's just a term that I use for, you know, creatures that stay small when kept in small ecosystems. So here we are one week after setup. The jars are beautiful. I'm very happy with them. The jar on the right is approximately one day older than the jar on the left. And uh, they are a little bit different, uh, but they should be pretty much identical. Already I've started to notice that these tanks are deviating from one another a bit. Uh, this is the jar on the right. And we have some of our bladder snails in here cruising around. We have some ostracods, copepods, and other small creatures. I'm not sure what that guy is there on the right. He is not a planarian. So it's out of my uh, expertise. I'm not quite sure. We'll have to wait and see if more of those will make themselves apparent. But our bladder snails here, uh, they're alive. They're breathing. This is one week after uh, the jar was sealed up tight. And they're doing okay. They're looking for food and exploring. Our tubaflex worms that we saw right before we cut to the uh, week later footage here. Uh, they're still up here on this day flower stem and they're still alive. They're moving about and uh, yeah, they're active. Now looking at the jar as a whole, we can even see a few bubbles coming off the plants occasionally. That's awesome. That's what we want to see. That's what powers this ecosystem to survive. Uh, over time, in the future, in a month or two from now, we should see a lot more of these bubbles forming as these plants are fully settled and adjusted. So we're going to put this one back here towards the windowsill, and we're going to look at the other jar. We did build two for this project, and looking at the side of the other jar here, uh, you can see a, a, great, <laughs> a great deal of detail about how spike rush actually grows. This is what it looks like. The samples that I included originally were taken from uh, a small jar aquarium, and it happened to grow up against the glass and form like a mat, essentially. 
but when kept in a project like this, it will branch out and it looks a bit like pine needles or like a uh, straw broom. But here in the second jar, our bladder snails are very active. They're very healthy, but you have to remember that these guys are the pioneers. These are the first uh, snails to enter this ecosystem. So they're gonna search for food. They might mate and lay a few eggs for us. And uh, the real goal is to get them established in the long term for future generations. But I'm pretty happy with these projects, you guys. This is episode two of the weekly Biosphere Build videos. Uh, I might be a little late. It might not be exactly a weekly series, but uh, yeah, I want to make the best possible videos I can for you. So if I have to delay it by a few days, then I'll have to. I have already planned out episode three. And for episode four, I have a very special idea involving microfauna from a whole other region. We're going to order some bugs from our friend over at philipsfishworks.com link in the description. But there's the jars. Please check out the videos that are appearing on your screen right now. Like and subscribe to the channel, the videos, all that good stuff. I appreciate it, guys. And please leave a comment, suggestions, anything you want to say. See you soon.